In his first career postseason, Devin Booker's taken out King James, and now he has a chance to take out the MVP in Nikola Jokic. D-Book's tearing through any defensive game plan thrown in front of him, and he's showing off some underrated qualities on the other end. So we're going to look at how Phoenix's superstar is getting whatever he wants, why he deserves your respect, and look at the main reasons why the Suns have been damn dominant against LA and now Denver. Welcome back to D-Flow Hoops. For consistent NBA content ranging from breakdowns to rankings, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single video. While the powerhouse Suns have every piece intact, as Chris Paul's 15 dimes in Game 2 signified his return to 100%, on the other hand, their opponents, the Denver Nuggets, are desperately missing the services of the Blue Arrow Jamal Murray, their second leading scorer, who tore his ACL midway through the season. The team they beat in round one in the LA Lakers was also heavily banked up, and while those are valid excuses, that doesn't take away anything from what Booker and the dynamic Phoenix Suns have done so far. This team is looking like they could very well go to the finals, although between Phoenix, Utah, and the LA Clippers, it's tough to pick who's the current West favorite. Let me know your take down below. But by the end of this video, maybe both me, the NBA YouTuber, and you, the passionate NBA fan, first of all, have more respect for Devin Booker. But second of all, maybe thinking about picking the Phoenix Suns to advance into the NBA Finals. Okay. And who knows, this could finally be Chris Paul's year to capture his first championship. Although the villains from bed in the Brooklyn Nets may have something different to say about that. If we did get that finals matchup between Brooklyn and Phoenix, the former teammates Blake Griffin and CP3 would match up against each other in a heated battle, so that'd be incredible to see. And with the electric shot creation of Devin Booker, who averaged 30 points, 6 boards, and 5 dimes for the series, that fueled Phoenix to a first-round upset over the LA Lakers. Despite the Suns being the number 2 seed and the Lakers being the number 7 seed, everyone, including myself, was picking the reigning champs to advance to the second round. The cursed Chris Paul had a matchup with King James, there's no way he could get the edge against him, right? Well, it turned out we were all wrong. Well, all of us, except for the diehard Sun supporters. The full capacity crowd in the Valley has been classy, supportive, and of course, damn loud. From Utah to Dallas to New York and Atlanta, there's been some incredible environments that are adding to the NBA viewers' experience in a major way. No crowd has been better than Phoenix's 18,000 fans who provide a dangerous sixth man for their stacked roster of talent. It's a mostly inexperienced cast revolving around Devin Booker, Mikhail Bridges, and the man in the middle, DeAndre Ayton. However, Chris Paul and the elite 3 and D man, Jay Crowder, those are the valued veteran voices who have taken this team to the next level and mentored that young talent. When the Suns collectively held LeBron in check and took down the Lakers, they handed King James his first ever opening round series loss, you probably already heard that, but no one was more valuable in that effort than Devin Booker. To close out the Lakers in Game 6, the Suns' top scoring option put up 47 points on LeBron's head. He hit 8 of his 10 three-pointers in that game, and the Lakers' defense had absolutely no answer. Speaking on Booker's performance, Suns head coach Monty Williams said after the game, quote, Players like Book have a determination about them. I've said this about him. He doesn't run from the moment. In this particular case, the moment was the whole game. End quote. Devin Booker became the second player in Suns history with 45 points and 10 rebounds in a playoff game. Only other man to do that in Suns history is Charles Barkley, who did it twice. But somehow he did something even more impressive in that same game. Booker tied the postseason record for threes made in a quarter with six trays in the first. It was a highly efficient masterpiece from Devin from start to finish, as he shot 15 for 22 from the field overall. So here's how he's making it happen. Whether he's doubled, blitzed, or if defenders are heavily contesting his jumper, the Kentucky product and two-time All-Star is just getting into the lane and knocking down about everything. Devin's mix of speed and craftiness make him a legit three-level scorer. Once he gets that first step on whoever's tasked with guarding him, the elusive dribble combinations he's pulling off are too overwhelming to slow down. For his defender, it's impossible to tell whether Booker's going to beat you off the dribble and attack the basket or either pull up or step back in your grill from 15 to 22 feet. 
I've had the pleasure of watching some damn good mid-range shooters on a nightly basis in my lifetime from DeMar DeRozan to the Hall of Famer and all-time great Kobe Bryant, but Booker's right up there with those two guys in terms of his in-between game. D-Book's size-ups, jab steps, and how he rises up to release fundamentally sound lasers time after time make him a potentially all-time great mid-range operator when it's all said and done. It's also his Mamba mentality and his killer instinct that makes him special. After taking out the Lakers at Staples Center, here's what Booker had to say. Honestly, I was thinking about Kobe in the, in the conversations that, that we had, you know, kind of about, you know, what we just went through, you know, the postseason um, and, and being legendary and taking the steps to get there. Um, you know, so seeing that eight and that 24 up there, you know, with the way that the lighting that Staples has right here, it feels like, you know, it's shining down on you. Um, and I know he was here tonight. I know he was here tonight. I know he's in the building. I know he was proud. Despite his exceptional scoring ability, for some reason, I still see a lot of people saying a player like Paul George is better than Booker because of his defense. In actuality, Booker is an underrated defensive stopper, and due to what he does offensively, that aspect of his game gets heavily overlooked. Devin's pesky in the passing lanes, and he's got the adequate lateral quickness and strength in order to compete on the perimeter. I don't know why people are still saying he's a liability on this end, when he's made significant strides guarding on and off the ball during the 2021 season. In defensive real plus minus, Booker's 13th among shooting guards, which isn't outstanding. I'm not saying he's a top-notch player on this end, but that ranks him ahead of a player with a much better defensive reputation than him in jingling Joe Ingles. You can't deny that, Jazz fans. I'm not making the case that he's a top-notch two-way player, Devin Booker, but he's much better than what he's made out to be on defense. Overall, this man D-Books benefited tremendously off the leadership of Crowder and CP3, like his other young teammates have. I'm comfortable in saying Booker's at the very least a top 15 to 20 player in basketball, and that the Phoenix Suns will advance to the conference finals. But the momentum, chemistry, and likability this Suns team has is for real, so they could definitely go further than that. I want to know your thoughts on D-Book and the Suns down below. Can they make the NBA Finals? Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and want to see more. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.